It's just grrr. <laughs> it's the best way to explain it, grrr. For those of you that haven't been following this channel, I've used Notion or used Notion for about three years, uh, note taking, project management, task management, everything. Then I changed app and I started using Obsidian for my note taking, using Todoist and Morgan, Google Calendar for my projects and tasks. And it's worked really, really well. But now Obsidian, there, there's, these, it's not, it's not an issue. It's not you. It's me. <laughs> it's not. A, it's not an issue with Obsidian itself. It's an issue with what I'm trying to do with the tool. Now, this is something that I have learned using loads of pieces of software. In that you can't make a piece of software do something you want it to do if that's not not what it's for. Uh, so I'm at a point now where a lot of my notes, actually all of my notes, are in Obsidian. I've moved them all from Notion into Obsidian. Now I still use Notion on a collaborative basis. Whenever I'm working with anyone else, I use Notion. When I'm taking notes for myself. I put them in Obsidian and it works perfectly fine. I do my audio recordings in Obsidian. I process all of my notes because I have different pages, different panels I can open, backlinks, outgoing links. Everything can be as messy as, or as I want, but it's still somewhat organized and I know where everything is. I can find everything through search, through either page search or through word searches. I can use workspaces. There are so many benefits to using Obsidian. So what are the issues I'm having? The first thing is long form writing. Now I did my master's degree dissertation in Notion. Now I planned it out in Notion I wrote all the, the small little notes and sections and parts in Notion and I had a lot of my references inside of Notion but actually wrote it out in Microsoft Word, in, in Word because when you submit it, it needs to go through something called Turnitin. I'm not sure whether that's a global thing or just UK but it goes through Turnitin to make sure you haven't plagiarized and, and all that sort of stuff. So I used Microsoft Word for the actual writing of my dissertation but all the planning and all the notes and everything that I'd grabbed together was in Notion. Now, I'm currently working towards doing a PhD and a lot of the stuff that I did in Notion, it, there was just so many friction points trying to write it up and bring it all together, which is why I moved over to Obsidian in the first place. But Obsidian has the same issues with long form writing. If I have a big long document in Obsidian, one, the outline just gets massive, which is fine. I mean, it's the same in Word documents, uh, but it's hard to navigate from my experience anyway. Uh, but that's not the main issue I have with the long form writing. With the long form writing is citations and references, because in long form writing, you're going to have lots of references. This is if you're doing any academic work or any long form work that requires citations, references, or just going back to other notes, like backlinking to other notes. Those of you that have seen some of my videos previously, I use footnotes in Obsidian to reference other points, where I got the idea from, where I got the notes from, and that's how I reference wherever the idea has come from, which is the, this, uh, what's the word? Bottom-up note-taking, there we go, got there in the end. Uh, Bottom-up note-taking, where you have lots of small atomic notes all over the place and you bring it together into something tangible, into something usable, and I use loads of atomic notes, and they're all over in my Obsidian space, and you can see it in Obsidian Publish, which I'll go through in a second, but when I'm bringing all those together, I want to know where I where I got them from, like where it came from, which is the footnotes and the references. But adding all of those into a long-form document just makes it look extremely messy. While I'm editing this section, I realized that I didn't really explain myself very well. Essentially, when I have the different references inside of Obsidian, I can do it in multiple ways. I can either have the name of the page, which sometimes is quite long because articles have really, really long names. I could use aliases, which I could shorten it down and then have a, a shorter version of the link in the page, or I could use footnotes, in which case I would just have a number or whatever the footnote is, and then I'd have another line for the footnote. Any of those options works. The most appropriate option, I think, would be the aliases, but it means I'd need to make an alias for every single page that I've made. So it would be this person et al number or whatever, if you're using the Harvard method or whatever name you're going to use. Or you could use the footnotes, which are actually shorter and much, much easier to see, but then you need to make the footnote every time and it's just a pain in the bum. Um, and that's what I meant by just long. In addition to that, when I'm writing long form articles or writing something that is going to be put out either on the blog or on a website or maybe published elsewhere, I, sometimes I want to reference the same point or the same article or the same reference citation and I either need to go and find it. So if I've already referenced it in the article somewhere, I need to find where I've referenced it before or I need to search for it. And if I'm searching for it in Obsidian, I need to search and find in find it in search and then bring it in. So either that's a copy and paste over or a drag and drop over. Whereas in some softwares like 
Word, for example, if it's integrated with Zotero, I can just click and search for it and enter and it's already there. And that automatically puts it in the uh, uh, bibliography at the end with it all sorted and I don't have to worry about anything like that. So long form writing in searching for references and repeated references again is easier in Microsoft Word. As much as I don't like Microsoft Word, I'm just gonna add that here. The next issue is partly due to my way of note taking and the amount of notes I take because I take loads of notes on articles, papers, blogs, and it all goes into Obsidian. But it means when I'm putting them into pages or processing pages with lists of different notes, there are loads and loads of notes in there. Now, I did this in Notion previously and I never really looked back at them because they were just pages and I didn't have to click in and click out and go in and out. That was just a pain for me. That was a friction point. So Obsidian allows me to go through all of those pages because I just copy the paste, copy and paste over the information and then just backlink it in the page, which again, you can see in my Obsidian Publish how I'm doing that all. But because it's much easier for me to do that, so I've reduced a friction point somewhere else, I'm actually adding a friction point later on in the process in that, well, now I have, so yesterday, for example, I was going through my learning page, or my R learning page, and I had to go through over a thousand different backlinks, all going to the same place because I hadn't processed that page for a while. So there were just so many points in there that I needed to be like, okay, categorize that, well, they say categorize, put that into a more specific page, put that more into a more specific page. And I had to go through and process my processing note, which makes sense. But because the friction point of capture is almost non-existent and all of my points get brought in, it's really good for me up here because everything is all brought together and I get a lot of synthesis and a lot of critique on the points I have because most of the time they are repeated, but I need to actually process those things. It, it takes time to process those things. Now, this isn't an obsidian issue, but when I am going in and processing these notes, I then make another processing page and then another processing page. And those processing pages take a lot of work, a lot of time to build. And what this means is when I want to create a working note or create some sort of summary on the processing note, it's either longer to make because there are so many processing points, or I don't really know how to summarize it in a way that is somewhat coherent without loads of other points below it. So it makes me want to write an article about something, but if I'm going to write an article about something, I'm gonna be doing that elsewhere. So my idea of having a working note is really nice, but it doesn't seem to work for me at the moment because the working notes are they're short enough to make sense in my head when I'm writing notes up for things, but they're too short when I want to write an article. This is what I'm finding. The current solution I have for this issue is I'm not going to do working notes as I have done traditionally most of the time because a lot of my processing notes, there are so many different ideas that go off in different directions that could build up an article. I'm just leaving them as processing notes. So I may just get rid of working notes entirely and sort of replace working notes with working articles, articles that I've written or essays, if you want to call them essays, um, but things that I have written and somewhat published, whether that's a blog on, on my website or whether that's elsewhere, they are summarized projects. They're points that have been brought together in a cohesive way with references, with critique, which could be done in Word or elsewhere, but it means that the processing notes, I don't have that friction of, ah, oh, I need to actually make this make sense and put it into sentences and blah, blah, blah. No, I just, there's the note, there's the point, and I can quickly go through the bullet pointed page of all of the different ideas and notes with the citations. And again, you can go into my Obsidian and have a look at processing notes in the folder and working notes in the folder to see the difference. The third issue I'm having with Obsidian is probably not a common issue people are going to be having, but I use Obsidian Publish to share all of my notes. Now, Obsidian Publish is great, but a lot of the notes that I have, I actually relate to Wikipedia or other websites that do a better job of summarizing something because other people have got expertise in it that I don't have. So some of the pages I have in my Obsidian Publish are literally like one line sentences because I don't know that much about it yet. It's, it's just, I don't know because it's my personal wiki. But when people are reading something online and they want to know what's going on, reading a one line assumption from someone that doesn't know any about, any, about anything is, is not very useful from my own personal use uh, as a consumer, but also as a creator, looking at it, nah, that doesn't make sense. So if my personal wiki is diverting all over the place to Wikipedia pages or other people's articles or blogs, um, not necessarily in citations and references, but as actual directions, like I don't know what this thing is, go read that thing. In that case, I'm pushing people off my website so if I'm pushing people off my website, well, that's obviously not good right, as a creator. That's not great for retention on the website and all that sort of stuff. But it's also not useful for a consumer because you're constantly jumping around pages. And that's just, I mean, yes, it's lateral reading, but it's very irritating. 
So when I'm looking to share articles to share somewhat finished pieces, it's very difficult for me to justify, oh yeah, this is a good article, if I don't understand this word or this topic. And when I'm diverting people away, it's, it's diverting them all, all over the place. Um, and it's just annoying for me as a consumer, so I can't imagine it being useful for anyone else that's, uh, that's reading the article, which means either the article is going to be an opinion piece, which I want to try and avoid, because I want to try and be as neutral as possible and verifiable as possible, when I am writing a, a, a finalized piece. And I also want it to be as seamless and consistent and as easy for the consumer as possible when they are consuming all the information because information is all over the place and I just want it to be like, there it is. Nice, nice and boxed. And then Obsidian Publish does that to an extent, but because I'm linking all over the place, it makes it very complicated. Something else I want to add on there is Obsidian Publish, just like almost every other website, is something I have published. So if I make a mistake in something, this is something I have noticed using Obsidian Publish. If I make a mistake, if there's a, a bullet point missing, or if there's a full stop missing, or I've spelt something wrong, I have to go and change it. I have to make that, that grammar or spelling check, and it's just a pain. Um, and, and when you're sharing things online, it's, it's just one of the things that you've got to deal with, especially when it's written text, because there are grammar police and spelling police out there, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing, they are certainly a good thing, but it's very irritating having to correct all the issues that I make, especially as someone that is not very good at spelling. So having a website, like Wikipedia, as an example, where people could just go in and make the edit themselves and I can just check it, I'm like, yeah, thank you for that, and just cheers, rather than me having to go and solve all of the issues. It just, it makes my life easier and it reduces the stress of if I do make a mistake, someone can change it anyway. And if people disagree with something, they can also give me feedback elsewhere, whereas on Obsidian Publish, there's no feedback. They have to go onto either Twitter or some sort of social media platform to give me feedback or give me their thoughts or start a conversation around whatever the thing is. Where on some platforms, Wikipedia as an example, there's a talk page on every article. There's a talk page on every user page. So you can have a conversation with anyone about anything right there and then and reference the exact page in the article. So you can have a conversation about the topic on the page that you're actually looking at rather than having to go all over the place, which again is not an Obsidian published thing, it's not an Obsidian published problem, it's something that I would prefer through through like sharing information, I want feedback, which is why YouTube is so useful because you've got the comment section. People just comment on the video just like you can do and say, Danny, you're talking a load of rubbish. So I'm not going to leave Obsidian, I'm not going to not use Obsidian because it is so useful in all of my personal notes and bringing stuff together and the bottom-up note-taking aspect. When I'm writing articles, long-form articles, Word just makes more sense. But I don't like Word because there are loads of things and I could rant about that, but I'm not going to. Then when it comes to sharing articles online, Obsidian Publish is great, but if it's going to be a finished article, I would be better off putting it on my website for a search or be better off putting it on somewhere else, potentially like Wikipedia, which allows for feedback and other people to edit it. Yes, there are negatives and positives to Wikipedia, which I may do a video on in the future because I'm using it a little bit more and there are way more things to Wikipedia than I first thought. As always, it depends because context matters. So it'd be interesting to hear what sort of context you're in with your notes, whether you're just taking personal notes and they're scrappy or whether you're trying to put them maybe into an academic article, into a piece or sharing them online. It'd be great to hear your opinions in the comment section below.